hey, we have the myth, the legend, and you can probably take that in 10 different directions in the Florida Keys, but let's go right to the top of the heap. Captain Tony Terracino, like I said, the legend. My good friend, Captain Tony Terracino. Well, Tony, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Um, I got to tell you a little story. I'm 99 years old. Well, 90 years old. You just grew old. by nine I, years. I, I, I don't stretch it. I'm 90, and uh, they're pulling miracles. They keep me alive. They put wires in here. They gave me a new, like a new heartbeat. Right. You know, hit my foot doctor did a lot of cutting. I can almost jog now. <laughs> I'm getting younger every day. I think I'm going to go back to fishing. I've heard they, uh, I've heard they used animal parts on you, so I don't, well, I don't know uh, how excited I'd be. I caught a tiger shark. I think uh, I took a bite of the liver one because they told me it's good eating it. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, maybe that did it. Nine maybe years? That did it. Whatever your secret is, I love it. It's not living a healthy lifestyle, is it? Well, no. You know, I said this before. When you're born, God has a little book. And if he writes it down, Anthony Terracino, and he puts down a date when he's going to take it back. I should have left it maybe 20 years ago. But when it come up, he says, wait a minute, wait a minute. We don't count the time he was fishing. That's extra. So that's, You'll live to be 200 years old. I'll be 100 easy, easy. <laughs> also... Hey. Coral Terracino, your daughter, and I've already done a show with TJ. I've had a great time with uh, your other family members. Little Tony. Little Tony was great. And now Coral. Coral, good Hello. to see you. How are and you? Good to see you. Yeah, How are you? Good. All right, fine. Where do you Hold fall down. in line? This is a really I'm scary four question. Down. Four down. Four down. Four down. How many underneath you? Uh, there's 13 total. So <laughs> four. My math isn't that good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's to say there's a lot yeah, of yeah. youngers. Are you the boss of the family? Because uh, usually kinda like, they kind of like call me the godmother. Oh, the godmother. Yeah. That away. <laughs> I don't know how he, well, he kind of. Out of all the TV shows we've done, we're, I think we're approaching 90 episodes, maybe more. We may be coming up on 100 in June. And I get more phone calls from people saying, I want a copy of the Tony Terracino episode. Something about you that just draws people. Coral, let me ask you, what's the fascination with your dad everywhere you go? People just love him. He's history. There's very few people left now. There really is. Yep. Tony made me sad last time we did a show. He said, Cal, I think when I go, when I eventually go, a lot of stories are going to go with me because I'm the last. And I've yeah, got to yeah, ask the exactly. question, exactly. is he passing on stories to you and the other family? Other family members, all of us. We're different ages. Like I said, there's 13 kids. We're different, you know, different kids, different personalities. All, yeah. Uh, is her memory that good? Is she going to remember these stories? Well, you know, Coral, we lived, she lived, we lived on Eisenhower Drive, right on Garrison Bight. And uh, Coral grew up with the boat, the hustle, the people, the tourists. Mm -hmm. And when she came home from school every day, I wanted her to tell the story. She. <laughs> And she come home, we had a little monkey we called Sambo. Sambo the monkey, Beautiful. I've heard. He made CBS, NBC, yes. everything. I've heard rumors about yeah. this heard, Sambo yes, the monkey. Time, and yeah. Coral's, at, when she came home from school and a boat was coming in, I go, boop, boop. She knew I was coming in. She'd put the monkey and mm -hmm. put a uh, jacket on him because it was cold. Really? And, yeah. and you just could tell the rest of the story. And she'd walk him over <laughs> to the boat. Tell us about sister. <laughs> my sister was real little. She was just a couple months old. So what we used to do is take my sister's clothes as she grow. Right. Cut a hole in the tail, put it on Sambo, and we take him to the boat. He wear, you know, all kinds of what you know, a great turtleneck sweater. He used to go fishing, eat everybody's lunches, lay on the bed. Nice. Oh yeah. On the ground. One. Nothing fancy. That was my first boat. Yeah. Is that a steam 40 foot, boat? Eleven foot beam oh. and <laughs> an old beat up motor. Oh. One life jacket that I could put my head in when I wanted to sleep. <laughs> we didn't care about the Coast Guard in those days. There was no Coast Guard, was no, there? Uh, 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 you know what? Was there a Coast Guard back then? Yeah, well, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> sort of. Were they, yeah. were they doing their own little thing? Uh, extracurricular activities? We never did. We never knew. And we never cared. Right. <laughs> once in a while, they, we might share a, uh, a square group or something like that, you oh. know. I, but the Coast Guard was always wonderful. Oh, and then here's the Greyhound. How many Greyhounds now I are had, there? There's one left, the Greyhounds. 
Oh. That, that's Johnny. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, Johnny. Is that the, what, the fifth? Yes, this is still there. Yeah, this is Greyhound 2. 2. Okay. And look and, at the, I mean, you can see how the progression of the boat is getting bigger I, as well. I have 50 people in there. Legally today, I was allowed six. Oh, God. Yeah. Coast Guard was back, great. Right? 50 people you had put on that boat. Oh. Yeah. Well, and then the, the Greyhound That drive. I scuttled. Yeah. Oh, you scuttled. I, I had to. I, I, uh, I had run a couple of things back and forth from Cuba. Right. And I got strict orders to uh, oh. don't bring her back in. <laughs> really? So I, about five miles south of uh, San Key, I opened everything up. There's a great story here. And she went down, and that was it. Mm. And the Coast Guard picked us up. You know, they, Did you have to make it look like an accident? Yeah. Oh. But, Statue right. of limitations is yeah. up. You can I talk had my own, I was. <laughs> oh, this is just my wife has to tell the story. I went there, every day I'd go fishing, and it was still floating, just oh, to, So it never sank all the way. Never sank. Uh, the fifth day I went, to my wife Marty, she said, my God, look, it's still there. It's going back and forth with the tide. Oh. And all of a sudden, while we're looking, bubbles came up and she went down. Oh, like it was waiting for uh, you. She has to tell the story. <sighs> Sorry, um, I'll, I'll get over it. Did, did that break your heart to lose that boat? Yes, it did. Mm. I I uh, I have only respect for wooden boats, and every one of my boats were wooden. I never went plastic. It, it, it's 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 a it's a mental attitude. Sure. Yeah. You know, if I don't hear, I'm trying to sleep. I, <laughs> you don't hear that with plastics. No. You, you're like sitting in a movie house. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no noise, nothing. Oh, well, I would say you grew up here. Uh, you went yeah. from, you can see the progression of size yeah, of boats. Yeah, yes. The yeah. Greyhound 4. Yeah. Is this boat still in existence today? No. So that I, I bought know. that. I'm not going to name the state. Oh. But I, I met a beautiful minister. And he told me, I said, Is anything wrong with it? Tell me the truth. I'm a man of God. I never say that. <laughs> It had a, the whole stern was rotted out, so oh. where your shaft comes out. Right. And every time I went out and hit a bump, the the keel would sag, oh. and water would come in. <laughs> I tried cement, I tried wax, cement. I did everything. Finally, I sold it to a friend of mine, I got even. <laughs> He probably slept with your wife. You sold him that boat. <laughs> yeah. I always, I, women, both of me are always she. Okay. You got somebody to blame. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm getting really bored of this show. I don't know what else to talk about. I'm kind of running out of stories. <laughs> Not. <laughs> God. I could, you want to do seven hours right now? Because we can just keep rolling. Mm -hmm. Hey, actually, I want to come back to you, Coral, because you were nice enough to get me a copy of a DVD that was put together. Talk about a great brainchild of just walking down Duval Street, having Captain Tony just talk about mm -hmm. stories. Look at this building. Oh, I remember this. And it just, I'm a nut for history, and I, I, I thought it was very touching. Tell people how they can get some of that video, and hopefully okay. we'll be playing it's some of it. It's called um, Captain Tony's Key West. Mm -hmm. It goes back to 1949 and rides up all during the years. It has little clips of Key West, and it's wonderful. And it's done by my father. Now, the video department, Key West High School, mm -hmm. this was their project. And they just loved it. They got to work with my dad doing footage and everything. Cool. And um, this can be purchased at um, Jimmy Buffett's website, Margaritaville, mm -hmm. and also at the um, law office of Al Kelly. Yeah, pick one up, folks. Do, a portion of that goes to the video department and a couple of kids that have gone to college. They've mm -hmm. gotten scholarships. It's wonderful. Beautiful. It's a part of Key West, and it's done in his wording, and, you know, it's their project. Uh, they probably didn't have to edit anything besides no, they, a few... No, they, uh, they, there's uh, so much footage. <laughs> okay. you know, yeah. You give it a fair shot on it? Yeah. What happened here, the, the video class was trying to raise money, and because of Al Kelly, mm -hmm. he, pre, he promoted the He's whole the thing. That, so exactly. they asked me if I would do Captain Tony's Key West. I'm here 57 years. Right. I did... I would uh, not to do with editing, sound. All I would do is talk, mm -hmm. and it turned out to be a great, great thing. Oh, I was and jealous. I, I wish I would have thought of it. Jimmy Buffett turned, jumped in on it, mm -hmm. was selling it at the store. Mm -hmm. Now, what's happening here? It's 20 bucks 
but the money goes to the school. Right. Nobody gets anything. No, I love it. I think it's a great way of doing. Jimmy's not taking his cut or anything at all. So good going. Uh, you know, let's even talk about history because I've had you on the show before. So the, the first show I did with you, I naturally wanted to know about Jimmy Buffett. I wanted to know those stories. I don't want to go there anymore. I want to hear fishing stories. I mean, I see pictures like this one and you've got a tiger shark here. You've got a beautiful grouper in the middle of Warsaw, maybe. Uh, just some unbelievable fish. That was an admiral. Mm -hmm. Little Titi, my Cuban. Oh, right next to you and the and captain. Stand right. man. Yep, to the other I mean, side. That was history. That was my first big catch. Really? Yeah. Uh, and you told me before, but repeat it again. Some people would see a picture like this with a huge grouper that's mm -hmm. two, three, four hundred pounds big. And you said we fed the whole city. It, this isn't yeah. that we are just killing that, uh, fish to get more charters. That's, that wasn't the case. That was, a, well, we, we were artists. Mm -hmm. No matter what you caught, your rack was the painting. Yeah. And if you had a beautiful painting, you got more customers than the guy next door. Uh, yeah. Once in a while I was looking for a mermaid, but you can't do that. <laughs> it's not legal, you know. That's what kept the but, others so But long. that's what it really was. It's, uh, plus, let me, another thing is food. Uh. Food. All the little panfish like yellowtails, have grunts and things that were on a deck, I never, never sold them. They went to the locals. Oh. All the bigger fish we sold. What was the economy, 57 years you've been here, what was the economy like back around this era? I mean, were there, was there some down and out people back then? They were happy people. Were they? They were happy people. They, they, they didn't even know where to, where to you. Some of them never went to Miami. I, mean, was just, I fell in love with the people right away. Then they even went to Miami. They were just, just happy people. Right. And uh, they had everything. A captain was more important than any mayor in the world. I don't think they knew who the president was most of the time. But, uh, but they were just typical small town people. Right. I mean, it's so beautiful, it's hard to believe. Sure. And. Um, then carpet baggers come in like me, you know, carpet, <laughs> carpet baggers, baggers, and we screwed everything up. I think, <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to be honest anyway. Oh. So, and that says I, uh, oh. I ran for mayor yep. three times. I couldn't win. The fourth time, Jimmy Buffett you could jumped in '89. The <laughs> love kids, you know, all the kids in here. Yeah. Everybody was happy. The fourth time I ran, I said, you know, Jimmy, we can win. We can win. We get these people to register to vote, we'll win. And I got up and I remember the story way back in Elizabeth. The first president I voted for was Roosevelt. Right. The big cigarette lighter. My friends, you know, if I'm elected <laughs> president, there'll be food in every pot during the Depression. Man, I never forgot it. I said to Jimmy, we get these people to register, we can win. And I, I gave. Jimmy, let's invite him to the bar. Yeah. Free beer Sunday, 7 to 10. <laughs> and they all came. And I told my doorman, if they look respectable, don't let them in. <laughs> <laughs> the trouble. <laughs> and I gave one of them great speeches. And in the end, I said, look, Roosevelt said, if I'm elected president, I'll have food in every pot. <laughs> uh, let me tell you something. If I'm elected mayor, Pot in every pot, yeah! <laughs> you knew how to talk to the crowd. We won by 38 votes, 28 hookers. Oh. <laughs> do, you, do you, Tony, almost feel like that was a different life, a different person? Because me at 40, I can't yes. even believe yes. I was in high school. That seems so long ago. So for you, do you feel like that's a, it's, a different era, a different person? Yes, a totally different. Totally. I... Uh, but I, you know, I, did, I had an advantage. I only went to the eighth grade. I ne never got college contaminate me, you know. Right. So, so what happens? Each generation has their thing, no matter what it is. Right. I look at the kids today with high heels, like God. I, I, but each generation has their own thing. I was lucky. I was born in the golden years. The golden, even right. when I was mayor, 
Uh, to today, when they say Captain Tony was the mayor, the golden years. We were just lucky. We had more compassion. The world was different. Well, our presidents were different. Right. And, uh, and no matter who, they talk about Bush and this and that, I learned something. This is my country, right or wrong, and that's all I care about. Stay right there, what you just said. This is Key West now. Key West is changing big time. Do you, does that make you sad, well, or has it always been changing? Yeah, well, let me put it this way. I just did an interview with the uh, Chicago Tribune, and I, I always have a tendency to say the wrong thing, but it sounds good. I said, Key West has become another big tourist attraction. Slowly, slowly, what's happening everywhere, not only Key West, we're becoming a big Kmart. All right, that's the way you talk. People think money. Mm -hmm. They traded, they traded God for money, and you know most of these people don't even know how to spend money. Right, sure. Unless you mm -hmm. lived in Vegas for six or seven years, mm -hmm. and put the, I mean, you know, I did the whole trip. Right. The best restaurants, everything, you know. Now uh, you hear the, you hear your your Greyhound three is calling you from the <laughs> reef. Oh, um, the Greyhound 3 bigger, that you yeah. scuttled. Yeah. It's calling you. It's like the Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> but that's, it, you know, it, it would make me a little sad. I see pictures like this. This is a gorgeous picture of you two. Yeah. And you, you kind of wonder, are we losing a little of the history? But maybe in 50 years, I'll be reflecting back on this time saying, mm -hmm. those were the best days of my they life. Were, yeah. yeah. That's, you've, you've served more than enough time of being a steward out there. and. Uh, the days of maybe killing everything out there, and you admit this is this is something that happened all the way to the mid '70s to the mid '80s. You needed fish on the dock to attract charters, but you understood uh, food. Yeah, that's right. Food, and, uh, and that's it. I tell you, I, uh, when I leave here, I leave with a clear conscience. I did a lot of great things, and most of all. 13 children's not bad, and a couple, <laughs> couple of spares somewhere, yeah. but I don't count They're them. still turning you up. Know. <laughs> we don't have time for the Survivor story, the Survivor TV show, and after that aired, one of the, your kids you maybe never knew you had mm -hmm. contacted you, which is a great story yeah. in its own. And I had Captain Ganey Maxwell on the TV show a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago. Right. Uh, he's 84, but to you growing up or coming here in Key West, he was a young punk. I mean, here's 84 years old, a lot of life you've mm -hmm. lived, and he was just a young punk growing up, and uh, <laughs> it still probably makes you sad, but there's a lot of stories like this that will live on forever. Who, growing up, was probably one of your best friends, uh, captain that you always commiserated with? Do you have one, Tony, that was your best friend? Joe Russell. Oh, uh, uh, Sloppy Joe. Yeah. The famous Sloppy Joe. One of, one of your favorite. Oh, yeah. Captains. Yeah, Sloppy Joe yeah. was a... Uh, Sloppy Joe Jr. Junior, Junior, his son. Oh, uh, okay, sure. Until the yes, father dies, sure. the son takes over. Uh, yeah. But the longer you could tell, that's a, that's a great story. Yeah. Uh, well, we got a little bit of time. Tell, yeah, tell you a story. To... Okay. They, as you know, the story with Sloppy Joe's of the year, um, Frankie, his wife, and Joe Russell Jr. This is not the father. This is the son now. Sure. Lived in Eisenhower Drive. We lived, grew up in Eisenhower Drive, and they lived at the end of the street. And my sister and I, growing up, every holiday, Easter, Christmas, she always bought us baby dolls and candy. We were like family. They were very lovely people. Right. So after he had gotten out of Soul, the Sloppy Joes, that era, um, he got into running charter boats. And he wanted to put one. He went to the city, whatever. And it was called a shark. It was a beautiful, like a dark yellow right. boat. Right. And he put it right next to my dad's boat. Oh. Yeah, it was great. So we grew up with them, all the history. Yeah. And it's just wonderful. Is there rumors that maybe one day possibly a movie? Yeah. Possibly definitely, a movie. definitely. You were there. I'll be honest with you. I just would say, well, we had Cuba Crossing. Mm -hmm. Right. There's some stories. The the picture was black ball, but that's a story. Oh. It's a very good picture, really. It? It's history. Well, I'll, we'll show it on Comcast one day. Oh, it's great. Really, it's great. <laughs> so, uh, but right now. There, the production is on for a movie Good. Of, of my life, the, the real story. And you asked me to play you, which I thought yeah. was a great honor. Hey, great choice, a, too. There you go. I, I make a great Captain Tony. Ethnic nationality had nicknames, like the Italians would be WAP. You, 
and the uh, Irish, I'm not going to mention them because it's, and the Polish and the Spanish and the Jews, everybody had a nickname that we used. If you wanted to get a mad, you said it, and that was it. And it wasn't fair, but it was the way we lived. In fact, it was just like WAP. The only reason it was WAP, without papers. We didn't know that. WAP meant you got to get in a fight. So through the years, I'm talking about 90 years, slowly but surely, these things change. I don't hear them anymore. I don't know ethnic souls of another ethnic this, and all these things that were going on. So I'm in Key West, and we catch a fish that called Jewfish. And I didn't realize at the time, but the Jews felt the same way that Italian would whop, or a Spanish with this or that. You understand? I'm, this is, I'll be very honest, it's like a, an innocent confession. And I always use the expression Jewfish. And the reason they call them Jews, they hang around the banks, or they do this or they do that. And, and as time went on, and I have many Jewish friends in Key West, just like any nationality, I began to realize that we were growing up and the changes were here. And that was one of the big changes. And slowly but surely, they were trying to change it. I, I, I just, I, I read a name they wanted to give it. I, I couldn't believe it. For many, many years, when I met people that were sensitive Jewish, let's say, I would call it a giant sea bass. And that's exactly what it is. And before I die, I would like very much so they could put it on my grave after they urinate on it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was <a> anyway, <laughs> I call it a giant sea bass. No fancy name. None of this guala woo babaka woo. Right? And I'll feel good about it. And I'm I'm not doing this for just the Jewish people. I'm doing it for the Italians and all of us that went through this. And that was what I wanted to say, and I thank you. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you. You're the best. You can use it or do what you want with it. Take your urinate out. No, we, no, that's <laughs> yeah. true. We'll leave that in there. That's awesome. No, that's it. Absolutely. Yeah, Don't know you, what we'll do with that, but I love it. And I'd, I'd love to even transcribe it over to uh, and put it on a radio show. No, I mean, I mean, I don't care if you do it. Oh, I, it's nice. just something I want to do. That was very touching. Giant sea bass. Now's the time to say goodbye, and I don't want to, to Captain Tony well, Coral. Right. That was a great time, Tony. You're always welcome here. As a matter of fact, it's now called Reeling in the Keys with Captain Tony. I'm out that quick. That's amazing. <laughs> High ratings when Tony's on when he's not. <laughs> Tony, thanks. We're going to do this again in about a month. Thank you. I'm glad to. Absolutely. Coral, great yeah. having you on, and thank you. I don't want to say I'm pulling favorites, but you're my favorite so far. Don't tell, thank you. don't tell old Tony and TJ. I won't TJ. tell anybody. Promise. Folks, we'll see you next week, and again, thanks to Tony and Coral.